is the economy was only saved through massive government intervention. So the, when I say it's an irony was because what they did is they said, we want a set of policies that stripped away, reduced the role of government, and then they wound up with the government taking an even bigger role. And the double irony was it was the same people who advocated stripping away the regulation and advocated the government intervention at the same time. There is a kind of consistency to this, that if you look underneath this, there was a consistency. It was all policies designed to make the bankers more money. And it worked. If you thought that the objective of economic policy was making bankers more money. So in that sense, it was a consistent set of policies, but it didn't work for the rest of the economy. And finally, one of the things that it showed is that there were deficiencies in the governance of even the most advanced countries. One, the reason why I say that, I, you know, particularly in the, in, in the East Asia crisis, one of the things I heard over and over again is there had to be reforms in governance and transparency. The problem with East Asian countries were defects in their governance. And before I went to the World Bank, I'd been chairman of the Council of Economic Advisors in the United States, so I saw up front how the American government worked. And I didn't think it was that pretty of a picture. You know, it's one of those things that it, when you shave and you have these mirrors that, that make your face look, and you realize there are all kinds of flaws in your face. You don't want to see things too close. And I had, had the, the misfortune of seeing things too close. I, I shouldn't have done that. And when you see things up close, uh, it's not a very pretty, pretty picture. Uh, there is what I call massive corruption American style. And it's not in the form of brown paper envelopes, but the, the, in terms of dollar magnitude, not surprisingly, it's larger than anywhere else in the world. So, um, but in this particular case, at the core of the failure of governance was the Federal Reserve. Now, again, the reason why I want to emphasize this as an illustration, I don't want to beat up on the Federal Reserve. The, 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 the chairman is a, a good friend of mine, so, I, so th there are good people there. The, 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 the point is that as the development agenda has moved from projects to policies to institutions. Everybody says countries need good institutions. The next question is, what do you mean by good institutions? And what they said for a long while, well, look at the United States. They also say, look at Scandinavia, but I haven't looked up at that close, and you can probably tell us more about that. Uh, but looking at the United States. Let's go out. <laughs> Uh, the the uh, Federal uh, Reserve, uh, uh, when you started looking at how the, the, the presidents of the regional boards were elected, it was basically elected in secret by the big banks. And then who did the people who, who, who got rescued in this in 2008 and nine, where you know $700 billion was given, who got the money? The big banks. And then there was the question of transparency. We wanted to know where $700 billion went. Now, the wonderful thing in America is things leak, and if you have enough inside information, you kn we knew where the answer was. But it was a sort of a, a, an attempt at embarrassment. So we asked, you know, where did that money, we gave one company, AIG, got $180 billion. That's a lot of money. I don't know if you know, uh, some of you are, uh, but, but, but $180 billion is, is, is a, lot, a lot of money, a lot of zeros there. So one company got $180 billion, more money than we gave welfare for the poor over a decade. So. Where did the money go? We, we poured the money into AIG, and there seemed to be a hole at the bottom because at the end of the day, AIG didn't seem to have any money because we kept pouring it in and it kept going out. We'd say, where is it going? And Ben Bernanke, 
who had written paper after paper and said, I believe in transparency, suddenly lost the faith in the religion of transparency. He said, no, 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 it's none of your business. So in the end, I, I had to, um, uh, I worked with, with one of the congressmen, and the Congress in the United States does have certain powers. So as an ordinary citizen, I wrote to one of the congressmen um, and said, as a citizen, I want to know where the money went. And of course, she said, then held up the letter in Congress and said, you know, uh, we have to know our citizens are demanding it. <laughs> Uh, and, and of course we knew. Uh, the largest recipient was Goldman Sachs, who had been on the committee, who had elected Geithner as head of the, uh, the Federal Reserve of New York. And the second two, the number two and three, were foreign banks, not even American banks. And so it became clear something else was going on. So I, I mentioned that is only to highlight that the issue of creating good institutions and good governance is an institution that all of us have to face and is, is one of the uh, uh, major lessons that, we've, that come, on, uh, come out of the crisis. The second is the growing inequality around the world. A view that was held very strongly in the 50s and 60s was, uh, the idea that President Kennedy put it, a rising tide lifts all boats. And what we now know is a rising tide is very good for the yachts, but if the waves are too big, the little boats get destroyed. <coughs> and to translate that into numbers, what we, show, we know is that trickle-down economics didn't work. In the United States, you know, very clear, the top has done very well. We've had a third of a century of experiment with supply-side economics, lowering the taxes at the top, providing more incentives, deregulation, providing more opportunity. And a third of a century later, the bottom 90% has stagnant income. Median income of a full-time male worker is lower than it was 40 years ago. Wages at the bottom are lower than they were a half century ago. Median income adjusted for inflation is lower than it was a quarter century ago. Trickle-down economics hasn't worked. It's a system, if you say that a economic system is to be judged not by how Bill Gates does, and he's done very well, but how most citizens do, the American economic model has failed. 